morning, good evening, good day, and welcome back to Do Not Take This Cat Home. Kitty, are you going to be nice to me today? I wanted to come play a cat game because I'm doing this, well, playing this, right after I played the difficult game about climbing. If you've seen that, don't judge me on it. I am not good with those games. I was horrible. I was bad. I was bad and horrible. You know, no spoilers, but horrible and bad. Anyway, we have 14? Yes, 14 endings left to go. Uh, we're going to get right into it. You know, just love the game. I'm excited I can play it again. And I hope you guys are as well. How's everybody doing? I hope you're having a great day. And we are going to go get right into it. I'm not taking the cat home. Not today. Sadly, as cute as the cat is, you'd never take this thing home with you. You just can't take it home with you. You're a responsible adult. You are, with rent and bills to pay for, not to mention you need to buy food to survive too. There's no way you could take care of a cat long term, right? You can barely afford this little outing on your day off. What to do? Have we left? I don't, well, I went through it and I don't think I left the cat. Well, I have in a way, but have I fully left the cat? We're leaving the cat. Sorry, kitty. You're really cute, but I have to go. I have work tomorrow. You don't think it's a good idea to get the cat's hopes up of having someone look after it if you're not willing to commit. What if it gets attached and somehow tracks you down back to your home? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> See you around, I guess. You stand up, the cat watching you every move. Your every move. You make it halfway out of the alley when the cat meows almost pitifully at you. Oh, you boogie dooby dooby dooby. I have to go. You're a murderous cat. You eat me. I have to go. I'm sorry, kitty. You, 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 you're cute. No. Nope. You need to nip this in the bud and get on with your day. It's what's best for the both of you. You leave the alley and continue on your way. Wait. What was I doing? In all the excitement of dealing with your furry dilemma, you'd forgotten that you still hadn't said on what you were going to do on your day off. <gasps> we haven't gotten this yet. Say, what do we want to watch? I want to go watch a movie. Yeah. It's been a while since a film came out that looked interesting enough for you to drag yourself to a movie theater. But there's a showing of one such film at the old theater. The movie was a little too niche to be picked up by the new cinema that opened right across the street. That's okay, though. You're not exactly a fan of the crowds. And nothing ruins the experience of watching a new movie for you more than a nosy audience. Nosy? Noisy audience. Ooh. Save. Mm, we're gonna go to the old theater. You eagerly buy your ticket from the kind old man in the booth and head inside. It's barren of any trace of other people and the decor looks like it hasn't changed since the 80s. Maybe even the 70s. But it's what you're counting on. You consider buying some popcorn. But can't help but be concerned that everything at the concession stand might be expired. You move on and walk through the halls, finally locating the theater design designated on your ticket stop. As expected, the theater your movie will be playing in is completely empty. Perfect. You pick a spot right in the middle, even counting the seats and taking into consideration the gap of the staircase. That's weird, but okay. As you settle in, the dim lights fade away, leaving the room pitch black for a few seconds. Before the screen flickers on, no commercials or trailers pop up. The movie just begins. Please, you shrug and let yourself get immersed in the opening scene. But as you're getting into the premise, the doors open behind you, momentarily casting light into the room and ruining the atmosphere. You hold in a frustrated sigh. It's a public establishment, after all. The place can't exactly stay open if you're the only customer. Try to focus on the movie, but you sense the new presence slowly shifting around the theater, before heading in your general direction. What? In front of me, you have the entire theater open. You could have gone through the fair back. 
He gave in utter disbelief as the stranger shuffles down the aisle only to sit right in front of you. There's no one else here and plenty of places to sit. The stranger is also unusually tall. Even with the stadium-like arrangement of the seats be being in, uh, being on a somewhat deep some hop hole. Hold on. Let me try this again. Even with the stadium-like arrangement of the seats being on a somewhat steep incline, they're completely blocking your view. Save. Let's move to another spot. You don't want to ris risk escalating the situation further. This whole thing is already making you uneasy. Why would they choose to sit in front of you? Surely they know you wouldn't be able to see past them. Shaking your head with a passive-aggressive scoff in the stranger's direction, you reluctantly pick another less perfect seat in the theater. But as you settle down, you see the strange person get up. You bitch! You're just here to mock me, aren't you? Only to once again sit down in the seat directly in front of you. You look around someone helplessly as if waiting for someone to silently agree with you about how odd all of this is, or at least inform you that it's all an elaborate prank. But there's no one else here with you. That's how you always liked it, but you can't help but think that maybe it would be nice to have someone else if it meant not being alone with this weird jerk. I'm gonna move to another spot. You move again. And again, they sit right in front of you. You bristle, annoyed, and a little humiliated. Are they just getting a kick out of this or something? You wasted enough time with this jerk that you don't even know what's going on in the movie anymore. Well, come confronting the stranger. You hate confrontation. You can already feel your palms starting to sweat at the idea of it. Your throat's closing up and your body starting to shake. You've always been more of a flighter than a fighter. But you paid for this ticket. You've wanted to watch this movie for ages. And now this total stranger has ruined the entire experience for you. You're all alone in this theater. There's no one who'll help you if something goes wrong. But you're angry enough that you ignore the signs of your body begging you to put as much distance as you can between yourself and this stranger. You stand up. Even standing and higher up an incline, the stranger is still at least a head taller than you. Hey. The movie continues to play in the background, but you feel as if a rush, as if a hush immediately falls heavily over the theater at your movement. As if you can sense the stranger anticipating what you plan to do next. You square your shoulders and force a little bass into your voice. <laughs> Hold on. Hey. Christ. The effort makes your words come out more harshly than you intended, like a sudden and vicious bark. Oh, okay. Sorry. Hey! There you go. But you figured they deserve it anyway. You're being a real jerk, you know that? Just, what are you playing at, huh? Are you trying to piss me off? With the bass in my voice, you know? Would, if I was saying that, my voice would be squeakily high and so much fear in it. The silence that follows your words is deafening. So much that you glance at the screen only to find that the movie has... Paused? Huh? Your attention is right back to the stranger in front of you as they shift slightly. Like a small animal trying desperately to anticipate the moves of a predator. You don't move an inch. You don't look away. You don't dare to blink. Instead, your eyes widen as the person's head turns. Then turns some more. Then turns more beyond what should be possible. Neck bones cracking to face you directly. Ah! That's creepy, let me tell you. You can't move. Wide glowing eyes resting above a wider grinning mouth gaze down at you. The stranger opens their mouth and what comes out? is something impossible to comprehend. Yo, yo. That could be used in a song, let me tell you. That's pretty good. You should sample that. Ah! The voice is endlessly deep and creaks like a weighty door, foreboding and oddly melodic. Alluring, but it also snaps you out of your terrified trance and before you know it, you're already out the door. 
Oh, I'm booking it, let me tell you. You run to the halls of the empty theater, heading for the exit. You feel something watching you from behind. But you're too afraid to look. The exit now is in sight. You sprint forward and burst through the doors. You look around frantically and spot the crowded cinema across the street. People. That's what you need. Safety and numbers and all that. Without thinking, you rush into the street when a sinking sensation crawls down your spine, compelling you to look behind you. Saving. And I'm looking behind me because, you know, why not? Despite your resistance, you feel your head turning to look back of its own accord. While in the middle of the street, you catch a glimpse of a grotesque looking person standing behind the glass doors of the old theater, watching you intensely, cradling something with their arms, something familiar. But <coughs> Jesus Christ, are you kidding me? Oh! I think I got hit by something. A glimpse is all you get as a truck speeds forward and crashes into your body. Well, I'm dead, aren't I? This is how I die. You're killed on impact, your body splattered across the road and crushed further under the heavy tires. And next 16, poor screening arrangements. Fair enough. What if I just run to the cinema? Refusing to even risk a peek over your shoulder, you rush across the street to the new cinema theater. You didn't realize that it felt like you were, you've were you been surrounded by some kind of dreadful pressure. Until it very suddenly vanishes. Leaving you feeling more than a little shaken. But at least breathing comes easier. You think it's within your best interest to repress everything that just happened. Yeah. Deciding to wait for the movie you've been anticipating to be available on DVD or streaming, you join the long line outside the new cinema. By the time you've reached the ticket booth, you just want to get inside. So you pick a movie at random and take your ticket from the tired-looking teenager manning the booth. It's, the breathing is back. The decor is chic and sleek, and the inside is bustling with people. It's not what you're norm usually into, but it's kind of nice not being alone, even if you feel a little lonely watching families and groups of friends laughing among themselves. You'd get some popcorn, but the lines of the concession stands are long and the prices are criminal anyway. You go through the halls and follow the signs of the theater designated on your ticket before heading inside. <sighs> You sigh at the side of the absolutely crowded theater. You head towards the seat only to be told by the person next to it that it's being saved for someone. This happens a few more times before you finally manage to get yourself settled into a seat annoyingly off center to the screen. But the screen is at least visible, if not a little too close. So you grit your teeth and bear. The lights fade out, but a chatter doesn't. The rest of the audience seems content to talk through the commercials and even through the trailers. You figure the chatter will stop when the movie actually begins, but it doesn't even get slightly quieter as the opening scene starts to play out. You sigh out loud not thinking anyone would hear you anyway. This is why you avoid movie theaters like the plague. Oh no. Oh, hi cat, you're back. Why are you smiling at me? Oh, that's creepy. Oh no, it's the smile. Suddenly, the screen changes, showing the face of a black cat. A familiar black cat. Confused murmurs fill the room, but then the cat on the screen meows. I don't like it. That's not meowing. Thank you. The sound is strange and not like any cat should sound haunting almost melodic and layered as if made of multiple voices of different creatures creatures that would probably never say exactly that it's creepy please stop it stop it stop it
You sit in confusion, wondering why you haven't already gotten up and left to complete with the cinema stuff. But then you hear it. It's scattered and dissonant at first, but among the crowd, people start to chant along with the cat on the screen. The frick? Thank you, I guess. Stop! It's creepy! I don't want it! What is this? A rave? I don't know. Oh. How are you all doing it so like... Um... Weirdly. Soon, the entire room is chanting in perfect unison. 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 Everyone's starting intently at the cat on the screen. You're feeling strangely drawn to the screen yourself. But the compulsion to stare blankly like the others isn't that strong. For now. Also, you start to notice out of the corner of your eye that some of the people in your immediate vicinity are looking at you. No. They're outright staring holes into you, even as they continue chanting. They don't miss a beat as they slowly begin to frown at you in blatant disapproval. But their scowls deepen as time goes on, as if they're getting impatient. What if I try to blend in? Just blend in with the crowd. Thinking fast, you look at the screen and begin to chant in tandem with the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird, I'm not gonna do it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop looking at me! You feel the harshness of the collective gaze start to ebb away, the air in the theater becoming lighter once again. Yeah. You release air shakily, just realizing that you've been holding your breath earlier. You feel stuck. Surely you can't just up and leave now. Not after whatever all that was. The people around you all seem fine now, but there's no telling if they get aggressive at you for even moving too much. Never mind outright getting up and leaving. You decide to let this run its course. Hopefully someone will come along. Right? Or at least turn the film off. You continue to chant along with everyone. You start to feel lightheaded. You feel as if you could fall asleep, but your eyes don't feel heavy in the slightest. You try to look around and gauge the other's emotional state. But you can't seem to look away from the screen. You try again, but you're still locked into the eye, con into eye contact with the cat on screen. You attempt to physically force your line of vision away. You steal your nerves ready to throw yourself onto the ground if you need to, but your body only gets as far as tensing up for a moment before completely loosening itself again, making you lay back limply into your seat. You think you should be panicking right about now, but even your brain feels limp. Your thoughts a vaguely muted pastel pink, airy, sickeningly sweet and loosely spun, like cotton candy. You... You like cotton candy. You think you shouldn't mind your thoughts and your body being like cotton candy either. So, why get up and ruin that? It's nice here. You're more at peace than you've ever felt before in such a crowded room, still chanting. You've never felt so aligned and in tune with another person, let alone with an entire room full of complete strangers. You're not... You're not alone. Out of the corner of your eye, the person next to you starts to sink back even further into their chair. They sink even more. Then more. Not like they're slouching or reclining, but more like they're... Oh! Deflating. Their skin bounces up in wrinkles like fabric as if their muscles, their bones, have started to disintegrate. Their eyes dim before sinking into their sockets. Their mouth, still attempting to chant, falls open over at a cutoff. Yes. Gaping as the world ends in an awful hiss. 
a final weak release of air. You muse thoughtfully about whether or not you should be distressed at the sight. But even then, the blanket of peace doesn't leave you. Suddenly, from the pile of skin and clothes next to you, you see a lump moving around. You watch in dazed fascination as the lump makes its way to the part of the skin where the head used to be, and out of the mouth crawls a tiny black kitten. Nya, 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 ah, ah. I messed up, but okay. You can hear the familiar hissing sound all around you now as the unified chants start to fade, only to be replaced with the faint mewling of kitten. No. Oh. Finally, your voice is the only one still chanting, still human and alone again. You don't want that. You can't go back to that. Not again. Not again. Please. Just then, you go completely limp. Your body feels light, but it might as well weigh several tons, because you realize quite suddenly that you can't move. Not an inch. You can't shift your eyes to look around, you can't even breathe, but somehow, the chant continues to creak weakly from your mouth. Nya, 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 ah, ah. Oh, you, 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 you. A few kittens come forward and perch themselves on the chairs around you, watching your sinking body, mewling as they wait for their youngest sibling to emerge from you. Dozens of glowing eyes peer down at you. And as your eyes start to cave through the sockets of your softening skull, you manage to make out the silhouette of a familiar cat perching on the seat right in front of you. Your vision finally fades, and as that same hiss of air expels itself from your mouth, the last thing you sense is something small and alive, shifting eagerly under your skin. And again, happy birthday! Happy birthday, everybody! Woo! Happy birthday! Let's see if we can leave. Try to leave the theater. This is too weird. I need to get out of here. Gathering your courage. Or perhaps putting your fear to use, you stand up, fully intending to leave the theater. When everything comes to an abrupt stop. All the chanting stops, even the cats chanting on the screen. You tense and risk a glance around the theater. Oh, they're all staring at you. Every. Single. One of them. They're not moving. They're not even blinking. You swallow throat suddenly dry, even though a nervous sweat completely soaks throughout your clothes. You highly doubt that sitting back down will fix the situation. Your legs are shaking under the audience's unnaturally intense scrutiny. But you force yourself to step forward and forward and forward until you finally reach the end of the aisle. You feel the collective gaze even worse on the staircase. All their heads have turned uncomfortably to the left to look directly at you. The screen illuminates their faces, making clear their blank scowls. They seem even more upset than they had been minutes ago. Identical frown lines digging between their brows. You keep going, the heavy atmosphere be becoming more and more oppressive with every step. You're so tense with anticipation that you fully expect someone to grab at you from behind. But no one does. You don't hear any of them even get up. You exit the theater, holding your breath as the doors close behind you. You walk briskly through the halls, putting as much distance as possible between you and the theater full of people. Finally reaching the lobby, you just barely manage to catch yourself from falling to the floor as you gulp in huge gasps of air. <gasps> Phew! As I would do if I was, you know, ran. You expect to feel relief as you're breathing calm, but you feel a lingering sense of dread that only spikes once you finally notice it, as well as its source. You look up, and your stomach sinks. I don't- what do I see? The cat? Oh, 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 that's creepy! The eyes of the human! All the people in the lobby area of the movie theater, everyone in line at the concession stand, all of them are staring at you. And they- They look even angrier than the people in the theater. You don't hesitate this time. You duck your head, avoiding eye contact, and leave the cinema. Oh, they're everywhere. You ignore the glares of everyone in the ticket booths and the lines leading to them. 
you make your way home. Whenever you dare to look up at someone on the way, you flinch at the blatant anger, fury, and disgust on their face. You think you start to hear the faint sounds of cats meowing behind you. Or maybe a kitten? Doesn't matter. You just want to go home. You reach your front door and fumble with the keys, cowering from the look of pure hatred on your neighbor's face as he stares at you from his door. Finally, you get inside your apartment, lock all the locks in the door, and slide down with your back against it till you're sitting on the floor. <gasps> oh. Gulp. Blech. I don't know, I'm trying. You allow yourself a moment to breathe. New, now home, your heartbeat calms and your fear slowly bleeds from you, leaving you feeling strangely empty. You pass the kitchen, head to your room and slip under the covers of your bed, trying to fall asleep. Maybe it's just all just a bad dream, as you fall into fightful, fitful sleep, sure to be full of nightmares and glaring eyes. You try to ignore the ever-increasing sounds of cats meowing and yowling in the distance outside your apartment. Ending 17, black sheep. Why am I the black sheep? Okay. Uh, on second thought, we're gonna go to the carnival. You spend the day at the carnival. Ferris wheel, roller coaster, barrel boat, rides you've been on before. Hoops, coin toss, balloon darts, games you've played before. Funnel cake, popcorn, cotton candy. Food you've eaten before. All things you've enjoyed before. You're surrounded by groups of people all having fun together. Laughing, playing, eating, taking pictures. Making memories. And then there's you. The sun hasn't started to set yet, still high in the sky. But it will soon. You start to wonder if maybe you should just go home for the day. When you stop in your tracks. You see something. New. An attraction you've never seen before. A maze of funhouse mirrors? It sounds kind of lame, honestly. There isn't even a line to get in. But then, what else is there to do? Let's enter the maze. You enter the maze. Oh, thanks. Thanks for telling me. A few rooms in and you notice that the mirrors aren't all weird. Some just show you looking back at yourself. A little bored, a lot of tired, and so very, very... Maybe this was a mistake. Why did you think going into a maze of mirror was, mirrors was a good idea? Even if it was something new to experience. I... I can't do this today. You turn around to head back the way you came. Oh! Only to bump into a mirror. Ow! What the? Where's the exit? You try again only to find another mirror blocking your way. By the time you all turn around, you realize that the way you came in is completely gone. Oh, okay. Don't panic. I, I just ha have to keep going forward, right? You step through the only opening you can find and nearly trip over something on the ground. You bend down to pick it up. Huh? What's this doing here? In your hand rests a roar In your hand rests a worn looking flashlight. Curious? You flick it on. Huh? The light okay, well thanks. Crap! The light Did the power go out or did the attraction operator forget you were in here? How long have you been in here actually? You pull out your phone to check the time or maybe call the police. Your phone is dead. Oh, man. You grip the flashlight in your hand. The light it... The light it emitted earlier was dim enough for you to know there's probably not much juice left. Best to reserve it for a worst case scenario and feel your way out. Yeah. Yeah, you can do this. You take a calming breath. Well, forward we go. Hello, darling adventurer. Huh? Who said? Welcome to the mirror maze. Would you like to know how to navigate the maze? Uh, save. 
for sure. Save that one. Yes, I need help. Once again, welcome to the mirror maze. You're in a bit of a jam, but don't worry. You're in good hands. Or rather, good paws. I don't know if that's the... See these little cuties here? They'll be doing their best to guide you to the maze. Aren't they generous? When you enter a room, the emergency light will flash, letting you see past the past before you for a second. And also, what lies beyond them. Whenever you see these kind kitties, you just go where they are and you reach the next room. Unfortunately, they're not the only things in here. It is highly suggested that you refrain from following any of our other guests. They can be sneaky or distracting, but they're always hostile. So please take caution when advancing to the next room. Of course, this wouldn't be much of a mirror maze without mirrors. Can they hurt you? No, they're just mirrors, silly. They don't do anything at all. And you can't do anything to them either. They're just an obstacle you can't pass through. Go left, go center, or go right. The choice is yours. Though, if you find a room with no helpful kitties inside, and all the paths lead to a mirror or something else, it is recommended that you stay put, and just maybe it will work itself out. Now for your navigation tools. The flashlight you found doesn't have much juice left. It'll only let you get a quick extra peek at your surroundings about mm, five times. So try not to use it all up at once. You can keep track of your progress through the rooms up to the left and your lives up to the right. You got three lives, so be careful to avoid the less friendly guests lurking around. Why only three lives, you ask? Because you're soft and squishy. It wouldn't take much to damage you beyond repair. Okay. And besides, you're human. And humans usually only have one life, yes? And yet here, you get three. Don't you think you ought to show a little more gratitude? And that's the end of your tutorial. Hopefully it was helpful. Are you ready to play? What would you like to know? Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. I'm ready to play. Can you let me go? Can you let me go? Your request to forfeit is denied. Let me out of here. Screaming is not allowed in the maze. Can you turn off the flash, please? Of course. Flash off. Never mind, turn it back on. I want it on. This game is too hard. Oh, all right. Your flashlight will give you seven second chances now. And the flash will last longer. Is that better? Oh. I didn't even know I could do that. I will gladly take seven. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm ready to play. Okay. Three, two, one. Go. Uh, we're going right. Okay. Next room. Hope we're going right. Okay. Next room. We're going left. Okay, next room. Oh, we're staying put, let me tell you. This room feels off. Just wait. I think something just changed. Oh! We're going left! Okay, next room. Oh, oh! We're going left! Oh, we're staying put. I'm not doing this. I'm staying put. Taking a sip and I'm staying put. I think something just changed. Forward! We're going right. 
we're going stop it we're going right we're going right we're still going right let me tell you center what happens if I hit the mirror I'm gonna try this at the end see if I just poof in the mirror or I'm gonna stay Oh gosh, I didn't save before. I could have just hit a wall. Hmm. Okay. We're going left. We're going center. We're going right. Stop looking at me, you weird thing. We're going left. We're going center. We're still going center. We're going left. We're still going left. And I'm gonna save and see what happens if I crash into something. Save. Flashlight. Let's go right. Clang. Amir, I can't go this way. Okay, let's go center. Ow, my eye. Ow, not that way. Okay, stay put then. There's nothing there, though. What changed? Huh? You see it. The exit. You run forward, but as you do, the scenery shifts. Just slightly at first. But you're running too fast to stop yourself from colliding into the glass. Except, you don't quite go into the glass you don't exactly collide with it either you simply pass through it and on the other side you see an endless white void and that's not healthy i don't want it put it away oh it's me then i don't like it at all yourself dozens of you hundreds of you wandering around aimless Faceless and empty. So empty and listless, they don't even acknowledge your presence. You try to turn back, but the glass doesn't give. Past the glass, a familiar black cat walks up and looks at you. You think it meows at you, but you can't make out the sound. It tilts its head then walks away. The glass goes dark. And then it disappears. Okay. Then you watch helplessly as it disappears completely. You're trapped. But only yourself as company. Bad company. Actually, good company. I'm my best company. You beat the maze. Thanks. What happens if I don't beat the maze? That's that we're gonna see. Oh. You got four ending? No way. Oh, well, that's cool. Anyway, um, load. Let's see what happens if I don't make it out of the maze. Oh, I did. I did. I am dead. I'm gone. I am disappeared. I am dead. Suddenly, the lights turn on. Your eyes burn from the sudden brightness. As your vision adjusts, you see that you're completely surrounded by mirrors. The reflections, all grotesque in unique ways, look nothing like you. But they do look... Hungry. Oh. You back up. You don't know where to go. Was there even a way out to begin with? You bump back into a mirror. Oh, let go, let go of me, you bitch. And feel a fir hand firmly grip your shoulder. What am I, food? Again? Chump. Ah! There's a sharp pain in your other shoulder. You rip away, looking back to see some thing leading out of the mirror. Its face has no features, save for a large gaping mouth stained in your blood. Looking around in a panic, you think that the mirrors feel closer than before. The path you've come in from is long gone. You're surrounded, and every time you blink, you could swear the mirrors were getting closer. 
and closer and closer. Your horrifying reflections looking hungrier and hungrier and hung rear. I got chomped. And Nick 20, you failed the maze. Thank you. Thank you. Aren't you a little peach, huh? Aren't you a peach, you kitty? Anyway, this is it for now. We did five endings, which uh, they were pretty long. The, the theater one was really good. I really like that one. And this one was also pretty good. So, yeah. We still have a bunch more. And we're going to get back to it soon. We're going to get back to it soon. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. If you haven't seen the previous parts of this particular cat making my life a miserable hell, I'm going to put the link to the playlist in the description or I'm going to put it in the info box up on your right. Uh, comment down below if you're enjoying it so far. I mean, we've really got into it and I really love it. I think I didn't... Ex I still... I'm surprised how big the game is because I didn't expect it to be like this when I downloaded it. But, um, yeah, without further ado, I hope you have a great day and I will see you all later. Bye!